Now you started your business back in 2010 in a little garage in Balmain. Can you tell us about how it all began? Uh, so the idea first came about for the business when I was just really bored at work. So I had a corporate job. I was working in corporate finance with Ernst & Young and I was just always bored out of my mind. So I would spend most of my day surfing the web, mainly on Facebook and just uh, shopping online as any girl would. And I found that there was really not much out there that um, had, great, had great prices, really on trend, fashion, and fast delivery. And of course, the e-commerce environment has significantly improved since then, but this is back in 2010. So all I wanted was just to find a new dress for the weekend that I could have delivered to work the next day. And so I thought, you know, why not try and fill that market? So yeah, that's where it all started. And so with your journey um, right from the beginning, what was it like? What were some of, I guess, the challenges or struggles you faced, particularly in you know, the beginning stage? Yeah, well, it was, it was quite hard given my background. A lot of people, when I tell them that I have um, a degree in finance and accounting, they think that's fantastic because you can take care of the business side of things. But actually, it's, I, it was really hard for me to leave everything and to quit my corporate job and to embark on this entrepreneurial journey because I had, by the, by the time I was 24, which is when I started, I had three years corporate experience. I was very academic at school. And so it was just really hard to throw that away and to take that risk. Also, being an immigrant, um, a lot of people understand that your parents actually want you to excel um, in terms of having a good job. Like they bring you to this country in the hopes of that you would be in upper middle management and that's what everyone wants. So then I was definitely on the right path to doing so. So probably the hardest thing was actually to tell my parents that I was going to quit my great job and to just sell clothes online. Um, so, I mean, the natural thing was I just didn't tell them and I had to lie. So for the first six months, I would just pretend to go to work. And I was living at home at the time, which didn't help. So I would put on my suit every day, just go into the city or just go somewhere, um, start working on the business and just pretend to go to work every day. So that definitely was hard, but I'm glad I pushed through. Yeah, and I can imagine your parents now are incredibly proud of you and what you've achieved. Yeah, now, now they are. So but it took, still took me some time to finally tell them. Yeah. yeah. And so for entrepreneurs, um, particularly those that are starting out in business who might be going through that sort of um, similar dilemma, they might be in full time work, um, but do have this idea, uh, but just aren't really sure about how to begin. Mm. What advice would you give to them? How, how can they start? Um, I definitely think seeking out mentors is a great idea. Speaking to other people who have had um, similar experiences. Um, just meeting like-minded people. So the, the hard part for me was all of my friends um, had corporate jobs. They're either from uni or from work. So it was hard for them to understand what I was doing. And it seemed kind of ridiculous to just quit my job. And that definitely made it harder. So I think surrounding yourself with similar like-minded people definitely helps. And when you did begin, what was your vision for Showpo back then? Uh, I wanted Shopo to be a household name that's synonymous with a great, great clothes, really affordable prices, fast delivery and just great service. So, and we're working, tweaking that, you know, each and every day trying to perfect it. Uh, and also something we want to have is to have a great online community as well, which is why social media is so important to us. We want to um, really engage with our, with, engage with our customers to bridge that gap between our, our customers and us that you normally wouldn't have with an online store. So for example, we encourage our customers to send photos of their clothes, uh, them wearing Shopo, and we put it on our product pages. So you can see, when you go to a product page, you can see girls of every shape and size um, wearing this garment and styling their own way. So yeah, just build that little community. Yeah. And with that, um, the community that you talk about, I think that's really quite evident when you visit your website, that sense of community and inspiring young women. Um, when it comes to, I guess, building your brand, how would you describe the Showpo brand? Showpo Show as a brand for us, it's, it's fun, it's flirty and it's energetic. Um, it's really important for us to take the pretentiousness out of fashion and make it all about how you feel wearing Showpo and how 
you know, and how confident you feel because you know that you look good. So it's about, you know, each individual girl. And when you, uh, I guess, bring the, um, the branding into your work environment, talking about company culture, how do you embody that, you know, with the way you um, work with your team? Yeah, um, well, I think what, what's great is our company culture is exactly just like the brand. We're fun and dynamic and, you know, it's all about, it's all about having fun, not taking ourselves too seriously. And I think having a great company culture is really important, in t not just in terms of retaining staff and attracting the right people, but just having a lot of fun at work. Um, as you can see from just walking around our office, it, everyone's just constantly having fun. We spend so much of our spare time together. We have Friday night drinks every week. We're even going on holidays together for the long weekend. And you know, something unlike my old job, I actually want to come into the office um, on Monday because I'm excited to see the girls. And I, I think they are too. <laughs> yeah, no, I can definitely feel that whole vibe. It's very fun and um, quite inspiring. And we will take a tour around um, later to go and have a look at that. Um, I guess bringing that, um, you know, talking about examples of bringing that to life, um, can you walk us through some examples of how you've actually implemented that really fun company culture? Um, oh, I think it just happened organically because I guess you tend to attract people like you. So just even through the hiring process, we've always been drawn towards people who are quite like us and we always have fun, act we always go out together. Um, having, that, having that corporate background has really um, installed that in importance in me of having a good work-life balance and a strong company culture so we always make sure that we hang out together um, and you know that we're, we're, we're all actually really good friends. So many entrepreneurs are asking the same question well where do good business ideas come from? Where do you think good business ideas come from? I wish I knew I mean let's be honest I mean show, online retail isn't the most original idea in the world but and I applaud anyone who is bringing something innovative to the market but I think a lot of times once you actually get started with one business you notice all these market gaps where existing players are lacking so that's a great way to find new business ideas to actually just get involved and start and also of course when you travel you because Australia um, is so isolated so many exciting new things developing overseas that if you just travel you can easily find a few things to bring, bring back to Australia. And when you were trying to grow the Shopo brand, uh, what are some of the like marketing strategies or social media strategies that you um, employed that really helped grow your audience? Um, well, Facebook, is, Facebook has always been really important to us in terms of growing the business. And it was essential at first because when I first started, I had no money. I had a business that, I had a dabble at business at first that failed. I came back from travels, I quit my job. So I literally just had um, had to max out my credit card as the only option. So Facebook was free and it was fantastic and also because I had so much experience wasting my time on it with my corporate job. So using Facebook we've been able to just organically engage a lot of our audience. I mean of course now we do advertise as well but the foundation of that is based on having great content, having fun competitions and just giving your audience what they want. So I think that's really important. A lot of people try and sell using, using their Facebook page, but you need to give the audience what they want. They don't want to see advertising on, your, on their newsfeed and neither do you. So it's about, the, the rule that I use is, what do I want to share on my friend's wall? And that's what I end up putting, posting on SharePoint. Yeah, that's a really great approach. Yeah. And so what have you found that your particular target audience want? What are they inspired by? They love, just pretty things, you know, um, cute things and funny memes, memes. I still don't know how to pronounce. But yeah, so that's, that's the bulk of it. And we run a lot of competitions as well. Um, and I think um, a, one, one tip for people out there is that image is so important. So for example, we've had, a competition, we've had competitions where we're giving away $500 and someone will spend like an hour working on the graphic for the competition and we'll have a few hundred uh, entries but then I'll post a photo of a hot dress in one of our hot models and we're literally only giving away one dress and we can have up to 8,000 likes on that post just because 
the image is great and it makes people, it's enticing for people to want to like the image. So I think the message there is, you know, keep your rules and keep your rules and your message really simple and just use a great image. And as a business owner, um, you know, having so much responsibility, um, particularly when you were growing the business and bringing on more staff, um, how did you stay productive and organised? Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask about being productive. I, I'm a bit of a crammer, that was my style back in uni as well. But I think the only reason I can sit in that office for eight hours straight is because I genuinely just love what I'm doing and also because now my job actually involves being on Facebook for most of it. Uh, other than that, I think just breaking up big goals into small tasks always helps. Um, and you just, you know, I think everyone loves just having that list and just crossing it off and feeling productive. So in January this year, you uh, made the decision to close down your physical store and move 100% online. What led you to that decision and how has that changed things? Uh, Closing our bricks and mortar stores and just focusing on online was definitely one of the harder decisions we've had to make in business, but definitely one that I don't regret at all. Um, because of the way that the online store was growing, it was just uh, growing in double digit growth month on month. Whereas with your physical stores, it's really limited to the size of your store, foot traffic and seasonality. So after a while, it just plateaued. To in, in order to actually want to, for example, double your sales, you'd have to open another store, and that's a tremendous amount of effort. Whereas with online, you can just you know, tweak your marketing budget the right way and you know, easily, well, not easily, but you can, that's, that's a lot easier than growing, um, than doubling your store size. Anyway, um, for us, we just saw the importance of our, online, of our physical stores diminish in terms of sales. So gradually, it just didn't seem like it was worth the effort at all. As our online store, um, the sales was booming month on month, it, the importance of our physical store was just diminishing. So, you know, we decided to just get rid of it because it just wasn't worth the effort. And especially for me and our operations manager, we've loved it ever since. We don't have to worry about getting calls for sickies and we've got our weekends back so we don't ever have to work on a weekend again. So we absolutely love that decision we made. Now with the online market, um, digital startups are becoming really quite popular with this boom of online businesses. Do you have any tips or um, lessons that you've learned along the way with starting and running an online business that you can share with um, other business owners? Yeah, um, I think really important to building an online store is customer service. Although that seems obvious, sometimes it's that might get neglected when you're trying to grow too fast and when you're trying to cut cost. But in terms of building brand loyalty and having repeat customers, which is really so crucial, it's all about great customer service. So we try and uh, bridge the gap that you have the, that you have with your customers and try and keep shopping we try and keep that warm and fuzzy feeling that you have with shopping in the traditional sense. So just little things like having great customer service, having a personal handwritten note and gift wrapping with your parcel. I think it all really makes a difference. How has moving to a purely online store impacted your business? Uh, I think being purely online has definitely benefited us because we've been able to re-channel our time and our resources into more productive um, parts of the business, which is, um, digital marketing for example a lot of people say that it's great to have a physical presence because it builds trust with your customers but I think that there's definitely easier ways of doing that rather than maintaining a physical store so for example having a really clear about us page um, telling uh, telling you telling the audience your your customers your story um, for example we have a really candid behind the scenes look at our business on our blog um, and just, of course, again, great customer service and just as much transparency as possible, I think really builds trust. Um, and also a lot of pe people say having store helps because uh, people have a place where they can try sizing on, but that's a problem that's always going to be around for online retail that you, and you can't possibly just keep opening stores. So, you know, the important thing there, again, not to keep mentioning customer service, but customer, good customer service will overcome that and just having a flexible returns policy. And um, do you actually have a lot of customers send back 
um, closures for, for sizing and how do you... Like, we do, do and because we're so open with that, um, you know, for the, their next purchase, customers know what to, what to purchase and a lot of customers call us and ask for advice, so it's almost like being in a store, you have that personal touch and um, you, have, you have that advice. Of course, it's a bit harder, but we try and spend as much time with our customers as possible and just trying to give them, um, you know, our opinions on what the clothes look like. Named by Business Review Weekly as one of the top five entrepreneurs to watch in 2013, what do you think has been key to your success? Uh, I think what's been key to my success um, has been, one of the factors has been um, being fast moving and being able to quickly adapt to changes in the business. So I've never had a business plan, which um, isn't something I advocate for everyone to do, but it's actually allowed me to um, try new things using just trial and error and just and that way we've been able to have really fast growth um, and something else that's really important is having good systems and strong processes so I think that's something really hard for uh, for business owners because it's hard to let go and to delegate a year and a half ago I was still in my parents garage and doing everything by myself and just feeling completely burnt out um, whereas now you know after putting in really strong processes. Um, even just recently, I went on a three-week holiday to Europe and I only checked my email once and we'd ha we had our strongest month of sales. So, you know, I think it's really important for growth. And, you know, that brings me to my next point, which is having just a really amazing team because your company is the people that are in it. So, you know, finding the right people and you know, being able to retain the right people is so important to a strong business. And one last question. Do you have any final words of advice um, that you could offer business owners for achieving business success? Uh, well, one advice I would give is to take risks, which might sound cliche, but um, I'm naturally quite a risk averse person. And, you know, I'm always, I don't want to lose money, which is, I'm sure, I'm sure that's what, how everyone goes into business. But you have to look at it as, you know, if worst case scenario, you lose X amount of dollars. But the upside, the upside is you might find a winning formula that works, which then becomes a license to print money. So you never really know until you keep trying. And with the way, for example, the e-commerce industry is, it's so dynamic and ever quick changing and there's always new marketing techniques. You really got to try new things and just, just to stay on top of the market. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for offering your feedback and I guess your um, opinion about um, what business owners can do to apply um, you know, such practices to success. It was lovely having you on the show. Thank you. <laughs>